Hello, everybody. Welcome to A Dose of Dr. E and Dr. P. Today, we're going to talk about a really important topic, trend arrows, and how to react to them. Now, the advent of continuous glucose monitors has, has created a lot of conversation between provider and patient. We talk about the mean glucose, the standard deviation, the estimated A1C, time and range. But what is rarely discussed are trend arrows and how to react to them. Yeah, so what is a trend arrow? Well, it just tells you what direction your blood sugar is going. And we always say that the direction that your blood sugar is going is just as important, if not more important, than the number itself. So we're gonna give some specific examples, but I think you guys living with diabetes and if you're taking insulin, you know that there's a big difference between a blood sugar of 150 and just kind of cruising versus 150 and you know two arrows up, you're screaming upwards, or 150 going you know straight down. And with that same exact blood sugar, 150, you might do completely different things. Your blood sugar is going through the roof, take some insulin. Your blood sugar is going down, you might need to take carbs. So it just goes to show that that, that is such valuable information. Yeah, you know what, what drives me crazy, to be honest, is when I see someone with diabetes and wearing a CGM, and they have no clue what to do with the trend arrows, and they stick to these rote calculations given to them, and I don't blame them for years and years. You know, your insulin sensitivity factor, your insulin to carb ratio, and they don't take into account what direction the blood sugar is going. Mm -hmm. So what are the, what are the, what's the definition of these arrows? Yeah, so like the different systems, unfortunately, have slightly different, you know, definitions. But in general, uh, you know, straight across arrow means that more or less your blood sugar isn't really varying at all. If it's, you know, a rat, like kind of got that diagonal arrow up, that means it's changing by potentially a milligram per deciliter per minute. If you get the one arrow up, that can be one to two. Two to three. Two to three. Yep. Sorry, two to three uh, milligrams per deciliter per minute. And if it's two arrows up, it's, it's more than three milligrams per deciliter per minute. So what, what does that mean in kind of lay terms? Well, let's say you got two arrows up and it's changing by, you know, three points a minute. That means in, in 10 minutes, which is a really short amount of time, you could be 30 milligrams per deciliter higher. Well, even 30 minutes, you're gonna be, you know, gosh, 90, 90. Mm -hmm. 90. And that makes a big difference. And so when we start thinking about this, remember that when you take insulin, it takes 20, maybe sometimes 30 minutes for it to even start working. So when you're bolusing or taking insulin, you need to be thinking into the future of what's happening when your insulin starts working, of where your blood sugar might potentially be. And even if you're using a Frezza, uh, it works much faster, of course, but you still have to take these trend arrows into account. So Steve and I did a you know, revolutionary kind of like survey into you know, how people are responding to these trend arrows, and we'll put up kind of the suggestions we came up with um, to help guide people on how to respond to these trend arrows. And these kind of metrics are most helpful people taking shots or for people on a pump that is not a hybrid closed loop system. And essentially what the recommendations we came up with were to kind of predict what your blood sugar would be in the future and correct for a higher or lower blood sugar based on the arrow. So you wanna give some specifics? Yeah, yeah. basically we, we, we figured that the CGM predicts the blood sugar up to 30 minutes. So if you have a trend arrow diagonal up, that's you know one to two milligrams per deciliter per minute, we just made it really easy. You would add 50 milligrams per deciliter to your current blood sugar and correct for that higher number. And one arrow up, you would add 75 to your current number. And two arrows up, you would add 100 milligrams per deciliter to your number and then correct for that higher number. And we even knew that was probably underdosing, mm -hmm. but just wanted to give people an idea. Yeah, what to so do. the idea is if your blood sugar is going up, you need more insulin. If it's going down, in general, you can do a correction if you want, but we would kind of recommend just waiting to see kind of where it levels out before you do anything with, with insulin dosing. Yeah, you know, watch, watch the arrow and it'll, it might go two arrows down, one arrow's down, one arrow diagonal, and then straight across. And then at that point, after a couple cycles, you might say, I need to give myself a little bit more. Now, things are a little bit different if you're on a hybrid closed loop system, because in general, you can't really add 100 milligrams per deciliter to what you want to correct. So let me ask you, Steve, you know, if your blood sugar is, you know, 220 and you got an angle diagonal arrow up and you're about to eat a, a carb meal, how would you adjust for that? Yeah, there, there's a couple ways, but I think the easy way is to enter more carbs in your system than you're actually going to eat 
because it'll give you more insulin. And the way these hybrid closed loop systems work, they give you a suggested dose, but you can also just increase the suggested dose. But I'll tell you what, when I have one arrow up or two arrows up, I typically double what the pump suggests. Yeah, and I think, so that's step one. And step two is if you are going up, the best you can, wait for your blood sugar to start coming down or kind of turn the, the curve. Or even if you're flat, waiting for it to kind of, we, we call it waiting for the bend. Our friend Stephen Ponder wrote yeah. this book, yeah. uh, Sugar Surfing. So wait to see an effect of that insulin and then you eat. So if you're going up, you gotta you know take more insulin. Now, you know we had this other scenario to kind of conclude with that we're talking about, let's say your blood sugar is 220 again, same blood sugar. Um, you got an arrow going down and you want to exercise in the next 30 minutes, what would you do? Well, I'm going to look at my hybrid closed loop and see how much insulin's on board. There probably is going to be insulin on board. And I'll tell you what, uh, depending on the level, 200, and I really wanted to exercise right then and there, I couldn't wait, I would probably uh, either have a thing of juice, eat some carbs, or have it right there if, if I see the arrows going from diagonal to straight down, which is what I would pre yeah. predict it would. How and about I, you? I agree. And I think that really highlights this point that your blood sugar is 220. Um, you're going to be eating carbs and almost treating a low because you know your blood sugar is already dipping and you're going to exercise. So if you're 220 and going up, you'd say, I'm just going to hop on the bike and hopefully it'll burn it down. So again, just very different actions depending yeah. on this trend arrow. And if, if you don't have a CGM, you go 200, I'm jumping on that treadmill. Yeah. And if you don't know that it's going down, and this is why... CGM is so important. Sorry, interrupt. So you. I think you know. Hopefully, some of these will provide guide rails for you. But the ultimate idea here is you have to be incorporating the, the trend arrow into your decision making. And there's a big difference that you know these these directions make. And start liberating yourself that you can adjust your insulin doses. You can. You don't have to be so you know set in the the formulas that the pumps or your provider uh, gives you. You have to be kind of nimble with this. That's important. And you know it. It's a, it's, there's a lot of guesswork, trial and error, and you got a CGM on, so you're never going to get it perfect every time, but you just, if you remember those concepts, you will improve your time and range, avoid highs and lows, and just uh, feel better. All right. It's been fun as always. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.